Okay. Good morning. Today is Thursday, April 14th, 2022. My name is Dr. Phyllis McCoy of the Oakland, California branch class, and I will be the moderator for this class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, the United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. Mm -hmm. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the heavenly father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. 
we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. I'm third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, 
to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword, peace, slogan, speak the truth. At this time, we will have our class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Edna Mixon of Detroit, Michigan. We will have a song, is it Pauline? I don't know if it's Pauline, by Dr. Pauline Forbes. We will have a scripture lesson. Now there's a big scripture lesson. So we have Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses one, through eight, also Lamentation chapter two, and then Revelation chapter two, verse one through seven. Hallelujah. And that will be read by that will be read by Dr. Felicia Smith of McKinney, Texas. And we will now have our prayer, please. Good morning, class. Um, may we bow our hearts for a moment of prayer. We want to thank you, Yahshua, for allowing us to gather today uh, and learn all we can while we can. We appreciate that you have allowed us to have these sessions. Um, and we ask that uh, you continue to open our hearts to a better understanding and to um, always give praises to you and let everything operate just as smooth and honestly and humbly as you love and to continue to keep us together, hold one another up in the name of Yahshua in you or in us. And um, that we just continue to show love because uh, it's enough hell out here that we said no thank you to, but we're cheering always saying thank you, Yahshua, for everything. He said, well, I'm going through a lot. Thank you, Yahshua, for everything, because he's the only one that can take us through it and bring us out of it. Uh, these blessings and our blessings, I want to say to our loving brethren, may we all just say hallelujah. 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 Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Get me off guard this morning. <laughs> OK. I come to the garden for the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my Lord the sound of your this closing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he turns me on his own and the joy he brings has rich I'm sorry. 
Oh, yes, Yashua. Please forgive me. And the joy. Oh, merciful Father. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear the sun is closing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we <coughs> share as we travel there there's none as ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The bird hush, they're singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells that we are not alone and the joy he brings. Oh, blessed. Oh, Yeshua. There's nothing as ever known. I'm not finishing. I'm not finishing. I'm not finishing. Uh -oh. okay. in the garden within. Though the night around me is falling, but he begged me go through the voice we have found his voice to me. Is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share has returned there, none other. As ever known. Hallelujah in Yashua. No matter what we're going through, no matter what happened, all we have to do is keep our eyes on the one man that wake us all up this morning. Even though we all are going through something, but the power of Yeshua bring us all together so we can Hallelujah. focus on him and let him know he got us all. Hallelujah. 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 Praise to Yahshua. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading the scripture lessons from the Holy Name Bible contained in the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. Genesis, the sixth chapter, one through eight. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of man, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is but flesh. Let his days be and 120 years. There were Nephilim in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of Elohim came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same were mighty men which were of old, men of renown. 
And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the birds of the heavens for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. That was Genesis 6, chapter 1 through 8. Next scripture, Lamentations, the second chapter. How hath Yahweh covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven to the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? Yahweh had swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob and hath not pitied. He had thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He had brought them down to the ground. He had polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He had cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He had drawn back his right hand from the enemy, and he had burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as the adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. Yahweh was an enemy. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. And he had violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He had destroyed his places of the assembly. Yahweh had caused the solemn feast and the Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion and has despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. Yahweh had cut off his altar he hath abhorred his sanctuary. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of Yahweh, as in the day of a solemn feast. Yahweh hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore he made the rampart and the wall a lament. They languished together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles without the law. Her prophets also have no vision from Yahweh. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. My eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and sucklings swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swoon as they wounded in the streets of the city with their soul, was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to the witness for thee? What thing shall I liken unto thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breath, for thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity but have seen for the false prophets prophecies and deceptions all that pass by clap their hands at thee they whistle and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying is this city that men call thy perfection of beauty the joy of the whole earth all thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash their teeth. 
they say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for and we found, we have seen it. Yahweh had done that which he had devised. He had filled, excuse me, he had fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He had thrown down and had not pitied. And he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. Their heart cried unto Yahweh, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like the river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thy heart like water before the face of Yahweh. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of thy young children and faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, O Yahweh, consider to whom thou hast this. Shall the women eat their children whom they swaddle with their hands? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of Yahweh? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of Yahweh's anger none escaped or remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up hath my enemy consumed. That was Lamentation, excuse me, Lamentations, the second chapter. The last scripture is Revelations, second chapter. 2, 1 through 7. And to the messenger of the assembly of Ephesus write, These things hath he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how, dost, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake hath labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden of Yahweh. Revelation 2nd chapter 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank everyone that came, that uh, participated. I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen, for scripture reflections. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you are all able to assemble with us to set together north, south, east, and west. And I'm know that we're going to have a wonderful day in Yahshua. The reason that I um, picked out these scriptures is I want to continue with the theme that they had with the sh Chicago um, gathering, talking about the wrath of Yahweh. In Genesis 6, it talks about how man's heart was only evil continually, and that Yahweh said, I'm going to destroy this earth, but he made a way of escape. And um, Noah found grace in his eyes. So um, it's 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 a scripture that can give us the understanding that we need to look to him and to be obedient to him. And then in Lamentations, I want to read through the book of Lamentations because for the most part, uh, we we don't quote it that much. But when they were disobedient. And the point is they were warned and told what would happen. 
and they just rebelled and said they did not want to serve Yahweh. And then it shows that the people suffered greatly, the ones that had turned their back on Yahweh, which what is that? That means to us, we need to keep our eyes on him and be more concerned with what he thinks than what our friends or our loved ones may think. We need to be straight with him. He is the way. And then in Revelations, I just wanted to, um, Revelation, I just wanted to look at the point that you have all of these different um, assemblies of Yahweh gathered together and they're talking to the angel of the church of Ephesus or what we would consider the dean or, or um, the one that has been put in charge in order to um, in, encourage this group and, and, and tell them the truth. And he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake hath labored and has not fainted. It's like, I, I see you, I'm aware of what's going on. Nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou hast left thy first love. It's like you're doing something wrong. It's like you're doing this right, but this this is what you're doing wrong. Here's where you're falling short. It's like their report card. Remember, therefore, from once there art fallen and repent. So turn around. You're going this way, turn and do the right way. And do the first works, or else I will come to thee quickly and will remove thy candle out of this candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, and thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, whom I also hated. I see what you're doing. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Yahweh Elohim. So here's the thing. Listen to this, to this teaching observe what you know you're supposed to do and you have a choice in that you can overcome to him that overcometh he's always going to make a will a way of escape to him to that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life that joshua the messiah which is in the midst of the garden or the paradise of yahweh so it's, it's like don't um don't be nonchalant don't be half stepping. Don't be mail. Don't be mailing it in. Be be strident. Be true with Yahweh, because He's been true with you. He's given you everything that you had. Just as as the uh, person, just as Pauline was saying, He's the one that gets us up in the morning. So I want to turn this over to um, Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Do you have anything else about the scriptures, and then we can continue on? Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and good afternoon to some. Praise Joshua Messiah. Yes, uh, when we started that book Revelation stuff, I'd say a lot of people that's listening weren't there <laughs> when we kind of went over those things. Uh, one of the reasons we've gone over the book of Revelation is because this is a vision of Revelation. And... Um, we should be able to understand it. And do you know that that Lamentations, um, uh, we read Lamentation 1, and that has 22 verses. Lamentation 2 has 22 verses. <laughs> the next one has, uh, well, 66 verses, which is three times 22. And then the rest of the chapters have 22 verses. Well, the book of Revelation has 22 chapters. And there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. And all of it means something. I mean, you know, Yahweh just with his intelligence mm -hmm. and uh, wisdom and knowledge. I mean, it's, it's infinite, his understanding. That's what it says that in the Bible in Psalms 147 and 5, I think, about that his uh, understanding is infinite. Uh, that means there's no ending. <laughs> And um, so when you look at that Revelation 2, um, remember that in the first chapter, it says that write the things which was, the things that is, and the things that are to come. And mm -hmm. so there he's, and you see that it's in red letters. <laughs> so it's the Holy Spirit or it's Yahshua talking 
to John to tell them what to say to those assemblies. Mm. And when you do that, which was uh, um, that the first assembly will equate with Adam, uh, mm. uh, the first dispensation. Uh, and, and then that which is, there is an assembly in Ephesus. We know that because you've got the book of Ephesians, right? And then it's that which is to come. We can bring it up to date with us. You understand? Um, in other words, you, you, you'll see the same thing repeat itself. And that's what you see Dr. Kinley talk about that. And I think in this lecture uh, that we started yesterday, which we want to continue, of course. Uh, so I don't want to spend much time, but um, uh, so uh, just for the example, uh, uh, you know, Adam and Eve's in the garden. He says, I know thy works and labor and patience and canst, canst not bear them which are evil and has tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. See, uh, wasn't a woman deceived by him? He said, don't you? Uh, you know, uh, go ahead and eat. Yahweh knows that when you, you, you'll be just like him, knowing good and evil. You understand? Right. In other words, he's acting like he's an apostle. <laughs> he knows what yeah. Yahweh Elohim's thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And they found out that he was a liar, right? Uh, he deceived her and has, has borne patience and for my namesake, but I didn't know about. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because you left thy first love. The first love was being obedient and and uh you know he could eat of all the trees he told them don't eat well they ate and that's how they left their first love they were cast out and that's mm -hmm. why they don't like them that uh, uh that found them they're better liars see uh but now in Ephesus, it's the same thing you know you got somebody you it's and you bring it up to class now um in other words, the gospel's been preached to you. There was assembly in Ephesus back there, and, the, and, and you were preached the true gospel of the kingdom. And people have left their first love. They say these people said they were apostles, and you found them to be liars. Mm -hmm. They're liars if they're telling you you don't have to go to the law and the prophets. Uh, you don't have to study nothing. You don't have to go down to them classes. Uh, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> you don't have to. You know, Dr. Kinley's your savior, you know, saying Dr. Kinley's your father, Dr. Harris, your mother. Now that, you know, those are liars, you understand? And you've left your first love. You say you don't, you're not nobody saved by the preaching of the gospel. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, but look <laughs> at the last verse there. Uh, when it talks about in, in all seven assemblies, he said, he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say to, unto the assembly. Right. So that's what you want to listen to is the Holy Spirit teaching. To him that overcometh. And one of the ways, and that's in all seven assemblies. The spirit say, it, let he that have ear, let him hear what the spirit say to the assembly and he that overcometh. And I remember Dr. Kimley in one lecture said, overcome what? He said, overcome your colossal ignorance and stupidity of Yahweh's ever presence. Right. <laughs> Would you ever think that? I mean, you know. And plus, Yash was the overcomer, see? And that's how you overcome things. But you have to give an ear. You have to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. Will I give to eat of the tree of life? Wasn't the tree of life back there with Adam? Mm -hmm. You understand? But Yahshua, and we've run the tree of life recently, so uh, we know that Yahshua, the Messiah. And uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, he said he was the true vine. Any man that uh, beareth not fruit, he, you know, taketh it away. And then you also read about the branches that are cut off and some are grafted in as the Gentiles. And that's what's happened. We've been grafted in. But you don't boast against the branches or your way you be cut off. And those that are, well, anyway, I don't want to continue with that. Um, uh, let's go back. <laughs> it's all right. Let's go back into the transcript so we can... Uh, so I just wanted to touch on it a little bit since it was a scripture lesson. Okay. okay I, I just had one thing to say. Um, when I was reading about Lamentations, it you said it has 22 verses and that the Hebrew um, alphabet has 22 letters. I read that it's an acrostic 
poem, meaning that each first letter goes with the different, each first letter in the verse goes with the, um, the things, the letters in the alphabet. You know how somebody for a Mother's Day card will say M O T H E R, and his mother is written down as my. And so it will be M Mother. You've been so good to me. Oh, you know. Oh, and then we'll have something that begins with Oh. That's the way that's written. Um, oh, okay. The Book of Revelation. That's what I read. And if anybody, you know, I mean, one thing about the Bible too. Uh, in Psalms 119th chapter, that's where you have all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and you have eight verses under each one. And so the Hebrew alphabet's in the Bible, but then the King James Version, since they took out the Y's and put J's there, they have for the 10th letter, Yod. <laughs> you understand? Because, but it's really a Yod, it was a Y. But uh, you see how the devil will trick that, and, and, and J is the 10th letter of the English alphabet. So you see how it looks, you know. In other words, you have to do some research, right? Right. But thank you. Yeah, I didn't know that. You uh, learn something every day. That's right. That's why we come to school. <laughs> OK. Uh, so we started uh, the transcript this week, uh, number eight. It's in the black book. Uh, September 1967. It's warning, probationary period, then flaming vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. And yes, we had our, uh, and, and that lamentation, it taught, started off the first uh, uh, verse there with, la with anger of Yahweh. And, uh, and why is he angry? Well, he made you in his image and likeness. And especially if you, if he tells you about himself and you turn your back on him, uh, the wrath of Yahweh is upon someone like that. You understand? A soul that does that. Uh, but the devil's job is to deceive and cheat you out of your salvation. And so it's a beautiful thing to be in this school and learn about the creator and his purpose. Um, so we left off on page two, I think. And yeah. uh, we're, at, we're at that last paragraph, I believe. <clears throat> okay, so it says, now there's one thing I want to mention here to point out to you. I know some of you have looked for many different things. You've looked for the Messiah to come jump down through the sky in 1956 and 1960 and 1963. And thus far this year has nothing happened. So you think. And as well, yeah, Peter, and I will say this, this is September 1967. Well, the first international convention of the Institute was, I think it was July 1967. Mm -hmm. And right before that, uh, uh, I think they had the Six Day War in 1967. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Kinley told them what was going to happen each day. <laughs> um, and it was equated like it was the month of June, and I think that was in June of '67, and that, and 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 that's when Moses saw the vision of the creation come in. Mm. Uh, so you know everything has a meaning, and he told him day by day what's ha what's happened. And matter of fact, the guy that was the general for Israel, his name was Moshe Dayan, mm. and so. And when you go through the first day, it said the evening and the morning was the first day. And <laughs> day and <laughs> but did Moses see that? Uh, I tell you what, you just you would never have nobody put that together but the Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, and I guess and wasn't that guy and the guy in Egypt that they were looking to to have that war? His name was uh, uh, Sadat. And he would say, Do you see that? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> or, or Nasser, there was Nasser too. Yeah. Uh, and he said, will he win the war? Nasser. Nasser. Right. <laughs> so, so he said, you think that something ain't happened so far, so you think. But the one thing is he ain't jumping through no sky. You understand? Because he ain't no sky God, uh, but he will be revealed from heaven. And uh, 
So he's going to continue on with that. Okay. So read and on. And as Peter you. put it, he said, now, those who say that all things go on as they were from the beginning, well, they done pretty well there. They can see that the same thing is happening over and over from the beginning. That's better than some of us can do, and all things continue as they were from the beginning. But this they're willfully ignorant of, how the world perished with water, and that day that the ark, they were dis... Let, let me put it this way. They went into the ark and sat there in the ark seven days, and somebody would pass along and say, now look, we helped him build that ark. We told that old fool it wasn't going to rain. How could the sky leak? Now, we told him before we got this thing all built. Now, there he sits out there with them animals in there, and the old fool just been sitting out there seven days. Nothing hasn't happened. And what I'm talking about is after the thing is all finished up and everything is all in order, and has it nothing happened? He sat there seven days, and all of a sudden starts to rain. Then the people commence to scream in to get in the ark. Now that's not the first time. Now another thing, Moses, he had to wait seven days before he entered into that cloud. He had to wait seven days before just that cow just had to wait seven days before he entered into that ark. Now that that's that's a pretty correlation if you saw what he was doing there. But uh, get Second Peter the third chapter, and you probably ought to get the charts too. Uh, that's what he was talking about when he said Peter said. Okay, uh, he was really going through Second Peter the third chapter, uh, uh. which all of us talk, I mean, which we talk about, and that's really the final, uh, well, that's what Yahweh's doing. I mean, well, it's later on, he's going to tell you about this age end, and it won't be the next end. Uh, but anyway, let's go uh, read that second Peter three, because the Jehovah witnesses, you know, go to Ecclesiastes one and four. And I've even talked to them personally when they did that, when we were in Zambia, uh, and they say one generation cometh and another goeth, but the earth remains forever. So they say he's not going to burn up the earth. Well, we know from Yahweh's eternal purpose that uh, there was a time when there wasn't a physical, there was a place in eternity where there was no physical creation. So it did have a beginning mm -hmm. and it's going to have its end because he declares the end from the beginning and didn't he have a, the angelic first? Isn't that a spirit realm before the physical? So the physical is going to run its end, it's going to go back into the spirit realm because it come from spirit, it goes back to spirit. Uh, you have the second Peter three? Yes, three and eight. One. Did you want to start at one or eight? Of, yeah, one, because he's talking about the scoffers, because at the same time you had that back there. Read that, yeah. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment to us of the apostles of Yahweh and our savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own luck and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now from see this, that, that, and didn't he talk about Noah? You understand? Now Noah's in those last days of the antediluvian age. And they helped him build the ark and they say the sky is gonna leak. You know, that old fool's out there in that ark there. You understand? And he talked about it being sealed. Well, you know, it, he was in there for seven days, sealed in there. See how you have to be sealed before the universal revelation mm. or before the wrath of Yahweh comes, which is the flood. Okay, uh, uh, continue on. 
So they're out there saying, well, where's the promise of the coming? Yeah, they always think, and you know, we, many, you've been around for a little, for a while in this school. You know how many times we were told it was, it could be in before we leave class. You understand? And now right. people aren't, aren't as urgent right. <laughs> in their, uh, you know, some people, well, well, some people said, oh, I, I don't really know much about the wrath of Yahweh. Well, you should. <laughs> That's what we're warning the people against. <laughs> Go ahead and read. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world <clears throat> that was that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now, right there, that's right at the dispensation and ages there. Uh, uh, that's what, that's the verse that's on uh, uh, the, the end of the antiluvian age, that the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That means it ended. And that's what we talk about, the, uh, Dr. Kinley used to say, the world, uh, Lenore, somehow you done got, uh, mm -hmm. old, old, oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, you don't see it, the chart? Yeah, we, we do now. It was got a while there. It had the Old Testament, New Testament, had this on there. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so you see that Second Peter 3rd chapter on there with the flood. Now, see, he declared the end from the beginning because wasn't in the beginning of Moses' vision of the creation, wasn't the world uh, inundated in water? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, and then that's how he closed out that age is with the, uh, with the earth uh, uh, inundated in water with a flood. And it had never rained before. So it's telling you a vision that had never rained before. Now, where he talked about being in that seven... Uh, uh waiting seven days now go to the moses chart uh see when yahweh spoke the law down uh uh moses had to wait seven days before he goes up there uh into the mount to have that vision and when he has that vision he has it for 40 days which is a great flood of knowledge and understanding you understand i mean yeah. it gives them the creation gives them the pattern and it's 40 days of, of of straight up uh communication with yahweh elohim that's a flood ain't it you see how mm -hmm. he was correlating that with noah mm -hmm. that's what we just read there you would never see that would you no uh, but uh it's a beautiful thing so that's what he said. He said, now that's not the first time. Uh, and, and, and so he, so he said, there are seven days, all of a sudden starts to rain. Then then people commence to screaming and get an ark. Now that's not the first time. Now, another thing, Moses, he had to wait seven days before he entered into that cloud. Just had to wait seven days before he entered into that ark. You see how he's correlating entering into the cloud with the ark? Mm -hmm who thinks like that the holy spirit and see it was moses that saw that had the vision to write about noah sitting in the ark seven days do you understand and he'd already experienced that uh, because he did it that first time up there and then he comes down throws the table of stone down then he goes back up and he gets another one and that's when he sees noah uh, and he sees the creation seven and 33 uh, and I think that's kind of cool how you have that seven and 33 uh, where uh, he's up in that mount seeing the days of creation and the tabernacle 33 days. Then he has a rerun the next time he goes up with the creation. That's why you got Genesis 2. And then then you got uh, uh, the 33 days he saw all the genealogy he writes about in Genesis three, four, five, six, you know, all the way to Genesis 50, and he sees the Pentecost. And, uh, uh, and so then when you go over to the prophets, uh, that temple was built in seven days, and it was uh, molested after 33 years, so you're 733. David was seven years in Hebron, 33 in Jerusalem. 
Yahshua comes in and fulfills that. He's 33 years in the flesh, nails the flesh to the cross, dies, buries, resurrects, pours out the Holy Spirit, and then seven years later to the Gentiles. You see that seven and 33? And you mm -hmm. have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay. So we got uh, we got to go back to the transcript. Um, doc, Dr. Lewis raised her hand. Dr. Sybil Lewis raised her hand. Yes, uh, good morning, um, Dr. Lewis, when you were, I had this question from yesterday and it's uh, uh, for uh, the new people to, I'm sure there are new people. And I think everybody would benefit from this question. Um, but uh, I see the principle that you're talking about with the seven days and the 33 with the tab tabernacle. Uh, but um, could you just um, explain, when you say Moses waited seven days before he went uh, in the top of the mount to receive the vision, could you uh, elaborate on that a little bit, please? Well, that was the last thing, Dr. Kinley, we just read in this transcript. That's the only reason we brought it out. He said, that's the last sentence we read. Now, another thing, Moses, he had to wait seven days before he entered into that cloud. He just had to wait. Um, uh, so you got a couple things there, uh, but I'll say it this way. Uh, you know, we go to Exodus 19 and we talk about, uh, it was in the 19 of one, it'll say it was the third month, right. same day they came to the wilderness, right? Then he right. told him to wash up and clean up for on the third day, he's going to speak his law down. Uh, so it's June 3rd when he's telling them that. And then three days later, uh, when they wash and clean up, he speaks the law down, which is June 6th. Okay. Well, how many days it is between that first trip and the second trip, how you uh, show it is that that first trip, he speaks the law down. And then uh, when you go to the fulfillment, when Yash, it says after six days, Yash would take Peter, James, and John up into the uh, high mountain apart, and he transfigures before them. Well, if, he tra yeah. if it was after six days, uh, and then one of the ones, the Luke or Mark account, I don't remember which one, one will say before eight days. Well, what's after yeah. six days and before seven. eight days? Seven. So that's how that. you know there's seven days between them okay so that's what he's saying moses had to wait seven days before he goes up into the cloud okay okay yeah but i think her question was where do we see it in the bible because it is very clear here and after six days yashua taketh peter james and john so after six days would be the seventh that he waits seven days and then takes them up yeah, so yeah. So that is that's that clear in in the Bible? That's what, with Moses. Well, that's what he's fulfilling. That's why you're. Ha that's why you have to. Uh, well, when he transfigures, he's fulfilling that he transfigured up there in the Mount Sinai. You understand? Okay. Uh, just like when Joshua goes up in the Mount in Matthew five. You wouldn't know you wouldn't see that that was June 6th but since you knew that he spoke the law down in June 6th he has to do it on June 6th to fulfill it oh yeah, sitting I get on it. top of that mountain you understand okay. yeah I get yeah. it so it's they together. all are related to each other see okay. uh, and then when you put it together like with the June 6th I mean you know you got the lamb killed in egypt on the 14th which is today <laughs> and then buried and resurrected on the third day then 50 days later speaks the law down june 6. well what's that pointing out joshua said the scriptures testify of me it's testifying right, he's going right. to die on april the 14th he's going to be buried all that 15th he's going to resurrect on the 16th and 50 days later is june 6 when he pours out the holy spirit see that uh, so you see how everything has a meaning to it there uh, uh, so yeah, I so just yeah. want to see Yahshua. Yeah, that's the point. Uh, 
And that's what Joshua said in John 4, 23. He says, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. For Yahweh's spirit, they worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. And he says, the hour cometh and now is. Well, how can the hour be coming and now is? Because he's living 30, an hour to Yahweh. If one day is a thousand years and a thousand years one day, and you divide 24 because there's one day is 24 hours. Divide that 24 into that 1,000, you'll get 41 and two thirds years. So when he's living 33 years, that's one part of the hour. But then when he dies, buries, resurrects, and pours out the Holy Spirit, that's still within the hour. That's when the Holy Spirit's poured out on the, to the Jews. Then seven years later, he pours it out on the Gentiles. That's within the hour. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him, right? The right. Yahweh of spirit, they worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. And would you ever see that before you come down to this school? No. About the hour, about any of this. You know it came by divine vision revelation. Just like we read earlier, I don't know when it was, but I thought I know we read it yesterday where he said, you know, ain't no man could have painted these charts <laughs> and put all this together like this. Right. right. It was the Holy Spirit. Too. Mm -hmm. Did that help out? I don't know. Yeah, we have something from Dr. Mariah Coleman. She's saying Exodus 24 and 16. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud cloud covered it six days and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud and the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel yeah all of it is good thank you Dr. Lewis and Dr. Coleman but wait a moment but wait just to get this straight this isn't it says, in the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered in six days. And the seventh day he called it to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Oh, okay. So that's when he goes up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Mariah Coleman. <laughs> and Thank Dr. You. Lewis. Okay. So now, now we're back, right? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm over there preaching. I got myself muted. <laughs> no, that 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 six days is when he's up there in the cloud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's already that, up there. Yeah, he's already up there. That's within the forty days, just like Moses. I mean, uh, Noah's in the ark for forty days while the flood's coming. You understand? Uh, so that six days is the six days of the creation atop of Mount Sinai in the cloud. Uh, that's not him waiting for six days before he entered oh, into Oh, the yeah, cloud. that's true. That's true. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then the seventh yeah. day, he called Moses out of the cloud. You know, we know that's the Genesis 1 there. Okay, you yeah, understand? Then he's up there 40 days and 40 nights and said the, the cloud was a devouring fire. Now that's showing. That's how the creation come in in Moses' vision is by devour, you know, devouring fire. That's why it's going to end in consuming fire. That's how he de right. declares the end from the beginning there. And that's what we were you could have read on with Peter, but we just wanted to get that part he was talking about with the scoffers. Okay. And the point is that Moses survived that fire. He lived. Yeah, Yahweh our Elohim's a consuming fire. That's right. Take care of them. Okay, so so now we're reading. Yes. Okay. Now I told you that 1960 was the end, and I show you how it come about by actual figures and repetitions. Now, what do I mean by repetitions? in the way it's occurred here before. Now listen, what's coming up now. We're talking about the end. This is not the first time that the world has ended. And the one coming up now, the end, that won't be the last time it'll end. Now we just might as well wake up and understand some things. Now, if we don't, then this is gonna be the results. 
it's going to be just like them people, just precisely nothing else but a repetition, not a thing else but that. People will, instead of, of it being destroyed by water, it's going to be destroyed by fire. Now, a lot of people say, well, now listen, I don't believe that. That That's still just like they didn't believe it was going to be destroyed by water either, but it was. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> yes, we see what you mean. <laughs> so, yeah, people say that it ain't going to be destroyed by fire, but that's what they said back there. It ain't going to be destroyed by no water, but it did, didn't it? And do you see how he said about the ending? Uh, uh, what did it say? Nothing else but a... Uh, yeah, it says now. Now, first he says, "Now I told you, 1960 was the end." Now, and I showed you how it come about by actual figures and repetitions. Now, see, that's what you have on that dispensation ages chart. Uh, Get at it? the bot at the bottom of it. Yeah, and uh, and and I'll tell you what. To show you, he declares the end. Well, better not do. Well, I guess I will. You know when Moses has his vision up there on top of Mount Sinai. Yes. It it it, it, it it's it. Uh, well, uh, after he saw the creation come in, that's in the twenty four chapter we just read, right? You mm -hmm. have Exodus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and thirty one. When you add them up. You get 196. Put a zero there. That's 1960. <laughs> so dispensation ages. Okay. This is my dispensation ages chart. Okay. The other, the other one. Now, oh, we we could show that one. You see the bottoms, you see 1656, and then you see 2377. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go to the other one. Go to the other one. Because he's showing 1960 in each one. Those Wait, are four. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 1960 is four 490 cycles. So that's what he meant by repeating it and showing it repeated at 1960. See, because you got Adam living 930 years and you got 50 years to Pentecost. That's 980. That's two 490s. And then 980 plus 980 gives you 1960. You understand? And so Noah, he's uh, 480 when he gets the vision. He's the 10th generation. Add that up. You get a 490. Uh, he preaches 120 years. The floods a year and 10 days. A year is 360, 10 is 370, add the 370 and 120, you get 490, the age ends. So that's ending at 1960. Those are things he shows in the Elohim book, okay? Then you got the next age, even though it's 1656, he shows in principle it's 1960, okay? Then you have four 490 cycles with uh, Abraham to the dedication of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was dedicated at 1490. So that's a 490 cycle from Abraham's birth to, you know, and take away 15. And that's how you get a 490. Then from the tabernacle, the dedication of the temple, because the temple is dedicated at 1000. The tabernacle, if you blew it up, you could see it down there. That four, 490 there. Okay. Oh, man. Then, then, uh, uh, so there's you got your 1000 uh, for the Solomon's Temple, and then another 490 will give you the 510 that's the Zerubbabel or Zerubbabel Temple. Okay, mm -hmm. then the last 490 is the Edict of Artaxerxes from 457 to when Yahshua was born. And then he lived 33 years. And when you add 457 and 33, you get uh, 490, which is four 490s. And four times 490 gives you 1960. Now, so when Dr. Kinley talked about 1960s, the end, it's, it would be 1960 from Yahshua's birth. You understand? 
And then it repeated itself. It re really repeated itself at the Dean's meeting <laughs> because the Holy Spirit was poured out at 34. And if you add 1960 to 34, you get 1994. You understand? And mm -hmm. that's when they called Dr. Kinley a liar because they had preached all the angels sinned and he said all of them didn't sin. And then they just kept that lie up and they've gotten worse and worse ever since. You understand? That yes. Kind of like, kind of like the end of IDMR, really. <laughs> well, as far as you know, believe in the man that had the vision and revelation. They just went off and went crazy ever since. But anyway, uh, I don't want to go. You know. So uh, the thing is, we're in a probate. We're in an extended period because Yahweh's in his long suffering, not willing that any should perish. So since it talked about fire, we might as well finish the second Peter, the third chapter, because that's what uh, that we were starting, because we talked about Noah. Then just read second Peter three and eight. And you have the dispensations here showing you that the, there were six days of creation and the seven day Yahweh rest. So each day is as a thousand years. So you got six thousand years of history and that's where we are now. And uh, and. Uh, and, and, and this age has to end. And that's what he was saying. And he was saying, what did he say? He said, now uh, we're talking about, this is not the first time the world has ended. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, it ended there at the post antediluvian age with the flood. And then when you read that Hebrews 9, 26, uh, that's what he has written there. And yesterday we did read 1 Corinthians 10, 11, which is on both of those, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Why does it say ends? But the holy name guy don't know that, so he just writes in. Very important not to be changing things when you don't understand. <laughs> uh, because Joshua said, what did he say in Hebrews 9, 26? Hebrews that's what's written on the cross there on the end of the post luvian age here, that, oh. on that line there, the death, burial, resurrection, Hebrews 9, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world, have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now you see that at the end of the world, hath he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself once in the end of the world. What world? The end of the post diluvian age. And how you know it was the end of the world? Well, I'll tell you what, you see the sun, you see, it, you see it turn dark at noontime to three o'clock. Wouldn't you say that was the end of the world? Yes. <laughs> when you see it pitch black dark at noontime to three o'clock? Yeah. You, say, you knew something would be wrong there, wouldn't it? But, so, but also what... Could it be when he's on the cross, he says it's finished? Is that part of it's, it's the end of of, sacri of of pleasing Yahweh through physical actions? That's right. But, but, but yeah, that's right. But see, when it says right there, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared, that's why he came, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. See, after he died, buried, resurrected, and sinned and poured out the Holy Spirit, you're in the judgment. You're being judged whether you believe him or not when he tells you, because the Holy Spirit's been poured out in this age. So the Messiah was once offered to bear the sins of many, but unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation, because he resurrected a quickening spirit. And isn't he going to bring salvation to your, uh, for your soul in your heart and mind? So that's him appearing. You know, he's going to appear uh, as the Holy Spirit in your heart and mind without sin unto salvation for your soul. You know what I'm saying? So that's an important. You can see how important that is. Okay. Now he's talking about the end of this age, how it's going to be burned in fire. So you go to the second Peter three and eight and read through it. Right. We stopped at the end of verse six. I'll start at verse seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto, the, unto fire against the day of judgment and 
perdition and unholy men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now you see that, would you, uh, the Holy Spirit saying, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day of Yahweh's is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. And did you ever have anybody tell you how that the Yahweh declared in the end from the beginning, he shows Moses a vision of six days and it's showing you the 6,000 years of time coming through? I no. mean, that is, yeah, that's by vision and revelation. And then the thousand years is one day. That's Revelation, the 20th chapter. That's before John gets the revelation on the Isle of Patmos. The Holy Spirit shows that to Peter and has him write it down. And then in that thousand years, the world thinks that that's uh, a physical thousand years and don't realize that's the day he resurrected. Anyway, uh, and so Yahweh's not slack concerning his promises, men count slackness but is long suffering to us were not willing that any should care should perish but that all should come to repentance that's why he's extended things he's in his long suffer i got that from a lecture he said <laughs> that's where i get everything from really yes. keep reading but the day of yahweh will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works which are therein shall be burned up. Yeah, so he's burning everything up. So to say it, this earth's going to last forever, it ain't going to end. Uh, no, he's burning up. Read on. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye to be in, holy, in all holy conversation and holiness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise. I, uh, she's moving the screen. Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth earth. righteousness. And that's really what's going to go on. I mean, that's really what's happening. We're in the fourth age. This age and every age is approximately 2,000 years. So we're getting down on it and it's time and Yahweh's turning up the heat and things are, uh, he's just giving us signs that, that you, you are, you can't get no closer to the end than where we are. You understand? And why? Why is this age have to end? Because this is just like this is the fourth age, just like Wednesday's the fourth day of the week. Didn't it have to end so Thursday can come? Yes. Well, this age got to end so the fifth age can come in. So, so what ends with this age is that he burns up everything and it ushers it back into the spirit realm. Then he said that, that he said, now this one coming up ain't the end. He said, there'll be another end. Why is that? Because there's a fifth age and that's got to end so the sixth age can come. You see that? Yes. And that's what he was saying in here. I mean, that guy, he says so much. It's amazing. Okay, we got we to gotta try to finish the transcript there. Mm -hmm. uh, or try to get more, more to it there. Uh, Wait a moment. Nope, that's not it. Uh, okay. Now, my job is telling you the, the truth about these things, try to inspire and encourage you. That's why we drew these charts. And I'm, I, I soon will be in this work going on 36 years. Now, I have been among the smartest of men there is in this world. We have written letters to kings, queen, potentates, high authorities, popes, cardinals, I don't want you to get this thing all twisted up and think that this is just some little passerby thing. We've had, we've had contact with the very smartest of men, nobody, nowhere, from even from the most highest educated men 
that you've ever had in any and all kinds of science and philosophy. They have all had to stoop. They have all had to take their hats off to me. And I want to say this to you too. Now they do not teach like this as it is taught in this school. They do not teach this way out here. And I'm old enough and been far enough to know and to tell you the truth about it that they don't. And it has to be taught this way. Yeah. <laughs> now you see that? He said, now my job is telling you the truth about these things try to inspire and encourage you and doesn't this encourage you when you get this knowledge and you know it's the truth yeah team yeshua yeah. and you see it's all put together and says that's why we drew these charts and he talks about everybody gonna have to pass uh, he said we don't want you to get it all twisted up and think it's just some little passerby thing in other words okay you're just another little group uh-uh no, it's the real deal. It's the only truth there is in the world. And everybody, no matter if them highest educated people, you ain't getting no higher than this. You have to bow to it. He said they all have to take off their hats. He even said if Michael and Gabriel come down, they have to yeah. bow down. Why? Because it's the truth. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, and said now they do not teach like this as we teach in the school. They don't teach it this way out there. And I'm old enough and been far enough to know. And if you've been in the school a long time, you know there ain't nothing no better than this. And, and to tell you the truth about it, that they don't. And it has to be taught this way. You have to preach the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. You have to line up the blood, water, spirit. That's how people have faith and confidence when you see things overturned, overturned, see it by the pattern. You understand? The correlations yes. make revelations. And people like to badmouth all kinds of stuff, but that's the way he taught it. You understand? And he laid mm -hmm. it out to the law and to the testimony. Speak not according to this word. There's no light in them. He showed the fulfillment. He showed the spirit fulfillment. And people want to badmouth that stuff. Badmouth the Bible. You have to show it in the Bible? Yeah. How's somebody going to understand? If you the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, wouldn't the Holy Spirit still go along with it? Yes. Wouldn't you be in agreement? Right. Yeah. So it has to be taught that way. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Now, I know that you, a lot of you are discouraged and say, well, I've, I've been going down there. They've been saying that same thing over and over and over again. Now, the Messiah said in the 24th chapter of Matthew said, in your patience, possess you your souls. Now, okay, we have, to, we have to correct that. Uh, now, Matthew 24 is the same. And he used to say that. Read Matthew 24. Read mm -hmm. Luke 21. Read Mark 13. They all are companions to each other. Mm -hmm. But that verse is in Luke 21, 19. Just wanted you to know that. Yeah. Uh, somebody could read that. It's Luke 20. It's not in the 24th chapter of Matthew. But he always did equate it. You know, I'm saying those three chapters, right? Uh, because they're companions of each other. Uh, what is it? 24? 20, 21, 21 19. 19. What does it say? And when they saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee. Henceforth, forever. No, Luke 21, 19. You said Matthew, okay. No, I didn't. Okay. I said that they were, I said, I said it wasn't in 24. It's in 21, 19 of Luke. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Right. What we did say was that Luke 21, Matthew 24, and uh, Mark 13 are companions to each other. And so that's why we stopped there, just to let you know that it wasn't in Matthew 24. It's, it's in yeah, 21, 19. And in so your patience and, possess you your soul. And you know what he's saying? See, why would he bring that up? Because people are discouraged. Yeah. And they're saying, right. I'm going down there. And they've been saying the same thing over and over and over again. Well, you need to be patient and understand why it's being repeated. <laughs> 
You understand? Because you sometimes might see that there's new people. What are you going to do? Isn't that how you come to an understanding? Right. Yeah, by being repeated and repeated over. And sometimes we forget how we come into school. You right. understand? And things, babes. other things is more important, huh? Babes, we came in as babes. That's right. We didn't know that we didn't know. <laughs> so we had to be taught, right? Okay, keep reading that, please. Yep. Uh, uh, now listen at these words. He said, for in such an hour as you think not, then it all happens in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, just like when Titus plundered Jerusalem. So now look, don't figure on going down there and saving none of your valuable. He's in up on the housetop. Don't, don't try to save some of that stuff you got in there. Run, get out. Now you pray that your flight be not upon a Sabbath day or in the winter and woe unto them that are with child and give suck in those days. Now you pray, you pray that it, it don't be like that because nobody will be spared. That's right. Uh, so that's in that Matthew, the 24 chapter, when they, when they start trying to show him the temple and he said, there ain't going to be one here stone ain't going to be left upon another won't be cast down. And he was prophesying of what happened with Titus did come in there. You understand? And mess and hit Jerusalem like that. And see, Yash Messiah fulfilled the Sabbath. But if you think you're going to keep the Sabbath, well, you're going to die in your house there. You understand? Because mm -hmm. uh, you understand. Uh, and, and and so though he knew, in other words, uh, don't be worrying about your stuff and all that, or you're going to be sitting ducks. You understand? Worrying about the physical. Uh, the, and that's why you would want to... Uh, uh, have your mind transformed. Yeah, we do have a physical body and we do have to do physical things to live this physical life, but you don't want that to be your God. You understand? Yeah. Dr. Uh, Coleman raised her hand. I just have a question. Um, I don't really understand what it means when he says, pray your flight be not in on the Sabbath day or in the winter and woe unto them that are with child. I just want an explanation of- us. I was thinking you would know that. Really? Would you wanna be taken off with, with Michael, uh, Michael Gabriel right now? Running, no. running for your life? <laughs> no, well, but really what I meant is pray your flight, pray, pray that your flight be not upon the Sabbath day. Yeah, see all those things are, uh, well, see, uh, uh, see, he, he, you see what the theme he's using, uh, in a moment and twinkling and now, yeah, now, um, now where that moment and twinkling of eye is that's in, um, well, first he's talking about the 24th chapter of Matthew. Okay. So that's the kind of theme, but, the, the, but we did go to Luke where it says in your patience, possess you, your souls. Now he mm -hmm. says, now listen to these words. He said, for in such an hour as you think not, then it all happens. That means it's, uh, well, it, he said it will come as a thief in the night, but there's a place in the Bible where it says, but it won't come you a thief in the night because you ain't in the night, you in the day. Mm -hmm. You understand that's in the Bible also. But in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, just like when Titus, plundered Jerusalem. They didn't know that Roman guy was going to go in there and do that. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, and the twinkling of an eye, that's that first Corinthians. That shows you how uh, 50 when it says uh, first Corinthians 15, 50 uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and then it says, what does it say there? Okay. Just to get that. Uh, but we want to keep this here though. Somebody can read it. First Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, yeah, so that's what he's talking about. In a, in, in, a, in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, isn't that fast? 
Yes. <laughs> that's how fast an eye blinks. Mm -hmm. And then so that's how fast he's going to burn this up and bring in, you know, we call it the universe, instantaneous universal revelation of Joshua Messiah. Uh, it, it, it's going to happen. Uh, he's a quickening spirit. You understand? Just like lightning. <laughs> it already flashes before you hear the thunder, don't it? Because it, 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 it's quick and it's fast. Uh, uh, it said, said, just like when Titus plundered Jerusalem, said, right. now, look, he see, he's talking to them at the, at the end of the post Lugan age. But it happened, you know, don't figure on going down there and saving none of your valuables. You ain't got, you know, ain't got time to look at the physical. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, he's up on the housetop. Don't try to save some of that stuff you got in there run and get out uh, now you pray that your flight be not upon a sabbath day because sabbath day you ain't supposed to go nowhere right. you understand right and if yeah. since they don't believe yashua fulfilled the sabbath that's why their enemies want to attack on the sabbath mm -hmm. you understand yeah, can, because, I just say, can i just say one thing if you lived in a place where you are around religious jews when they build up their temple, they live within walking distance of the temple, right? So they're not taking, and, and according to the law, you weren't supposed to be taking no great big long um, journeys on the Sabbath day. That was a day of rest. So they try to imitate that by living right near the right near the temple. So it's like a, a little community right around it. So they were not used to like getting up on the Sabbath day, moving fast because you're only going to the temple and then you're going back home and it was according to the law that you, that you weren't going to be going you know miles and miles and miles and see now we're seeing a type of this stuff with those guys how that war that's going on over in ukraine right now you understand do you think them guys care about no sabbath day no hey they dropping bombs every day, day and, and they night. also are doing it in the winter aren't they Yep. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because the tanks and them get stuck in the mud. You understand? So they the the, the ground's frozen. Uh and, and winter ain't an easy time to be traveling or running away, is it? No. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And woe unto them with child and give suck. They don't get they don't care about women with babies. You understand? They're they, killing they everybody. Bomb they bombed the nursing hospital. They bombed where people were giving birth. They don't give a damn. So that's so that's kind of what it's talking about there. He's talking about uh, uh, now you pray that it don't be like that because nobody will be spared. You understand? The devil don't care. Uh, yeah, and that's why you're looking to Yahshua. You understand? And 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 and. Uh, uh, but that, that he's talking about uh, fleshly Jerusalem and what's going to happen to them. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, well we have uh, two hands up, Dr. Burris and Dr. Snyder. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Praise Joshua. Well, go ahead, you all. <laughs> uh, this is uh, <clears throat> Miss Burris Robinson to follow up on Dr. Coleman's question. Since this, I thought, was speaking about uh, when the next end of time or when the end of this world would come, where would you be going physically, period, any day? Where, where is that for you to go if everything is going to end in a twinkling of an eye? Where would anybody be going? Yeah, that's a good point. And I would say this, that uh, if you look at winter as a season, see, uh, winter means you're dead and buried. Well, you don't want to be caught dead and buried. In other words, you want the resurrection. You want to be resurrecting your heart and mind with the Holy Spirit. So make sure that when the world ends, you ain't in winter. You understand? That means you're dead and buried spiritually. You want to be resurrected, right? 
mm -hmm. and bringing forth fruit like spring and summer. Yeah. You see that? Uh, so I, that's a good point there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Snyder. Um, just like, uh, good morning. <laughs> um, just like uh, Dr. Frank just was talking about, um, if you think about the ages, the winter is, and the darkness is through the first four days of the creation until Yahshua goes through his death, burial, and resurrection. So you don't want to be in the winter time. And that was one of the things I wanted to say. Uh, the winter times before Yahshua goes through his death, burial, and resurrection. Um, the other thing is pray that your flight be not in winter and uh, that, uh, that you don't give suck in those days. You know, our soul is on a migration just as everything in the creation goes on a migration. And we're really migrating from spirit to spirit if you think about the way the whole purpose is. But we go through these times when we are buried and, and psychologically so, we wanna be in Yahshua's resurrection. We wanna be on this side of the cross and we wanna be in Yahshua's resurrection and not be in the winter time and not be in a point where you're, you know, uh, the, the, have a child and the, the child is the soul within you. This thing needs to be uh, grown. You know, he's not talking about a little child that you're gonna run with. He's talking about your soul and mm -hmm. that that soul needs to be mature and be mm -hmm. able to, you know, take the step over, you know, That's be correct. in you. And so, yeah, and so that was another thing. There was one other thing, but I forgot what it was now. Um, could we read the verse again, just for, just quickly? I know you want to get back to the transcript. No, we could take our time. <laughs> First Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, Neither doth corruption in do you want, corruption. Do you mean Matthew 24? What do you want? No, I don't know. I, I can't remember. I'm I'm not even home. And I'm Are you not, talking not, about you know, what, what, the, what you were just talking about? Give suck and all that kind of stuff? I know what it was. The Sabbath day. Okay, okay. the Sabbath day. That's what I wanted to talk about. So you have all these Sabbath days through the law pointing out the day of Yahweh. The day of Yahweh is the Sabbath day. Why is it the Sabbath day? Because you're stopping the works of the law. You're stopping right. under this covenant. We had we don't have works of the law. So you're actually in the Sabbath day with your understanding in Yahshua the Messiah. If you're in Yahshua, just like he's in the Sabbath, we're in the Sabbath day. And so pray that you, you know, that you don't run on that Sabbath, that you're, you're not going to be working on the Sabbath. You're going to be in him and, our, you know, psychologically so. You've already passed from death unto life. And so it's just going to manifest when, when the end of this thing comes where you really are. You're going to be in Yahshua. You're going to be in his rest, unlike the children of Israel that did not receive the rest because of unbelief. And that's the whole point. We had, just like Frank had talked about this earlier in this class, we have to believe the way that he's done it. We have to believe the law and the testimony, how it's showing Yahshua the Messiah. If you think about the ages chart, Right in the middle of that chart, everything up until the cross is pointing out Yahshua the Messiah. Everything after the cross that we look at, the epistles, the creation that we look at, the witnesses that we get about wars and all the things that happen, everything that happens after the cross, that's pointing out Yahshua the Messiah now, his spirit now in a man. And so all, everything in the whole three ages in the flesh is pointing out Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the thing that we need to believe and hold on to and praise Yahshua that we have these great witnesses. So I hope you see that you're in the Sabbath day because <laughs> we are definitely in Yahweh's Sabbath. And I know in this age is to come, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have more of the Sabbath. It's not on this chart, but you have, okay, right there. And the next age is gonna be his Sabbath. And you know, at the end of the six days in Moses's vision, Yahweh Elohim showed Moses that he was in his Sabbath day or resting. 
So that's the thing that's going to be going on in the ages yet to come. But as far as what we are looking at in the time that we're in right now, we have stop works. There's nothing to do on the Sabbath day except believe in Yahweh. All right. And in, in order to do that, you have to do something. <laughs> All right. Praise Joshua. Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie. I have a comment, please. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I am so thankful um, that that question was asked, this, asked today. I think Mariah's question, that mm -hmm. is, I, I mean, I am so thankful for that because this question has come up before. And mm -hmm. um, hearing the answers to the question today, it was brought out because we're looking at uh, a natural principle to understand the spiritual and those types and shadow that was presented, showing uh, Yahshua and what Bunny said and Frank said, and, and I'm not talking about the physical people, I'm talking about what Yahshua is feeding his assembly. Um, mm -hmm. That was beautiful. I appreciate that because I was under that law and I, I never understood what that was talking about there. It, it, um, but the set, Take, uh, you know, your flight, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath day. You know what I mean? So I thought that was beautiful. Thank you. Praise Yahshua. That's okay. right. Thank you, everybody. Praise Yahshua. Uh, so continue on, please. Uh, We're here. Now, if you take the wars that are happening now, if you know anything about it and understand anything about it, little infants that haven't did anything to anybody, they just took them by the heels and knocked their brains out against the wall, just unmerciful in every respect. Man stand face to face and curse one another and put one another to death with a sword and shoot one, or shoot one another down just like they were rabbits or, or some other species of animals and think nothing about it just brag and boast about how many they killed and so forth and so on now you see what i'm talking about now these things are going on all over the world and we tried to tell you if i can get this out to you i think i should now is that up to date yep yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wars how the innocent are being killed and they don't care. And you see that out. I mean, that, even the people that was riding that subway, you know, getting shot and stuff. You understand? I mean, but it happens all over the world. You know, we, uh, you know, you know how much murder, I think uh, America is like one of the leaders who <laughs> well, they are in gun violence. I'll say that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but there's so much killing going on. They have no respect for physical life. Well, it's showing you the satanic spirit. He's there to kill, destroy, and he doesn't care about, you know, he wants to drag your soul down with him. And uh, so you see that warfare, it's still going on, ain't it? They don't think nothing about just killing people. Uh, and, and for, you know, but, uh, but, that, but we sh that's why you want to care for people's soul and tell them the truth. Right. You understand? And that's why we stand up against false doctrine, because mm -hmm. a lie will kill you. Yep. And so the truth is what makes you free. And so that's what's being offered down here. You know, and that's why when people preach false doctrine, you know, uh, the that's people right. that's in the Salvation Army of Yahshua and Messiah are going to stand up and fight against it. You understand? Right. Because you got to have yeah. somebody. And we got some weapons that will knock it down. You understand the right. truth, the knowledge, you know, the things the Holy Spirit's taught us. It's powerful. Okay. Now we told you that pattern was threefold. Now here is Egypt, the Red Sea, and the wilderness. Come on up in here. Come on up in here and cross over, back over into our in in here. Now this is a, a salt sea. This is a, I mean, this is the dead sea here, a salt sea here. This is the Sea of Galilee. And here's the river Euphrates. 
and all of it, the whole land. Now look what's going on over there, folks, is nothing else but a repetition. Now that's why I tell you, history repeats itself. Now you can't say that it don't. Now listen to this, next year, if there be a next year, next month, October is another month, isn't that right? Well, now look in your Bible, look in. I've tried my best to teach you this. Look in your Bible and see what happens, supposed to happen in October. Look in your Bible and see what is supposed to happen in the years. Now that what makes up the history of all that you see. And there is forever and always going to be a reflection. So this means you're without excuse. You know no man can do nothing like that. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, so he's just doing the migratory pattern, you know, with Egypt, Red Sea, and wilderness. Now, when you go to the Sea of Galilee, that's the way Israel is. You got the Sea of Galilee at the top, and then you have the River Jordan flowing down to it, and it goes and it dumps into the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Uh, it's, it's, it's the lowest part on the earth. 1260 feet below sea level yeah uh, he he burned out Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> and all it is is a it's the dead sea you understand yeah. and so that's the lowest part of the earth is the dead sea and you know the highest part of the earth's Mount Everest yes. to show you that the, we were all dead and the best thing to do is to get his ever rest which is eternal life you understand? Mm -hmm. And in the Sabbath, that's the seventh step, the rest. And the ever rest is in eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. So that river Euphrates, that's uh, when you read about Mesopotamia, that means the land between two rivers. That's where Babylon is. That's where Iraq is. And you got Iran, you know, and all them. Well, you know, that's all out there. Uh, when you read, and Iraq is Babylon, uh, right. and that's why we had a rough time going over there. You can't change Babylon. <laughs> well, you do. You do. You have to cast it out by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua, so you can receive the Holy Spirit, and there ain't gonna be no more confusion then. That don't mean the devil ain't gonna try you. So now you see how he's talking about history and how things repeat itself. Yes. Well, today's April the fourteenth. Yes. Or, or, you know, which is like, and that's when the lamb killed in Egypt. That's when Yash Messiah was crucified. That's the first feast day, according to law. And so Yahweh does repeat things. Forever now. Always. And there was a great earthquake when Yash was on the cross. So Dr. Kinley prophesied of that earthquake in Alaska on April the 4th, you know, uh, on the 14th. And, there's a, and so he just shows everything's a reflection and it just repeats itself over and over. And that's history, his yeah. story. And as we know, the first three feast days are April 14, 15, 16. They're showing you that April 14th, he dies. He's buried all that 15th unleavened bread. He eats the true bread. He ain't risen yet. Then on April 16th, the feast of the first fruits. Wow. And April 14th, Passover. So you see how you can feast on the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua? Those are the first three yeah. feast days. So they always have a reflection because of a great death with Yahshua. You're going to see uh, things like that happen right around this time. See, because he repeats himself and he shows us what to look for. See? And you know, no man can do nothing like that. <laughs> Did you ever, were we ever taught anything like that out there in the church? No. No. Okay. Read on. Now we told, okay. Okay. Now when we made these charts, they are analogies and one thing is related to another. Then they come in at prophetic in intervals and repeat that's all that's ever happened in the history of the world that's all that ever will happen and nobody on earth nobody that don't understand this pattern and its functions don't is incapable and disqualified to teach you they do not know and if the blind lead the blind you're subject to falling in the ditch and all of you fall in the ditch together 
Now, let me say this to you real nice. Now, there's people that's arguing about water baptism. Now, basically, where they got all that argument is that when Philip went down and baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, you understand? You see the point? So you see, made these charts, and they, everything's related. All the charts are related. And, 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 and he said that's all that's ever happened. He talks about the repetitions. And that's the history of the world. And we never even look to think of history being his story. Yeah. <laughs> they don't understand this pattern and its functions. We didn't either, did we? We had to come down to class oh. to learn about that. You ain't never seen nobody correlate the tabernacle with the human body till you come down to the school and show that nope. it was the creator that transformed in that pattern, showing he's the real pattern. He says, and if they don't do it like that, they ain't teaching like this with the pattern and showing preaching the gospel and going through the law of the prophets and showing you the different the dividing the dispensation and ages and when something's done and said you know those things are all important uh it says uh then they are incapable and disqualified to teach you they do not know and right. if the blind lead the blind you're subject to falling in the ditch all of you fall in the ditch together. Now that's Matthew 15, 14. Uh, and then he says, I'll, let me say this to you real nice. <laughs> <laughs> now there's people that, that's arguing about water baptism. And you still argue about water baptism. Do you ever see people? I mean, yeah. I remember we, 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 we were preaching on the streets in Jamaica. Guys, if you believe in water baptism, we said no it's about the holy spirit but we they, they said false prophets were gonna come <laughs> no, mm -hmm. they, we're not they don't realize they it's about the holy spirit baptism so. yeah yeah but that's a hard thing to get you know you have to sit down for have it proven to you okay right. so you got that matthew fit now it's matthew 15 is when they uh at the beginning of it, it the guys come up to Yahshua and said why do your disciples wash, uh, eat food without washing their hands and transgress the tradition of the elders by not washing their hands when they eat food? He said, why do you transgress the law of Yahweh by your traditions? And see, and that's what we were all up into was these traditions. You know what I'm saying? Or I guess Yahshua, uh, yeah, uh, um okay and, and uh you can't do a go to 10th verse maybe what does it say he said he called the multitude said i'm here and understand not that which goeth in the mouth defiles man but that which cometh out of the mouth this defiles the man then came his disciples said knowest thou that the, the pharisees were offended after heard this saying, but he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall in the ditch. That's what Yahshua Messiah was talking about there. Uh -huh. And so what does it mean? Well, did you ever have, most time we didn't hear anybody say they had a vision, did we? Well, you no. got to have vision so that you, so you can see. And if you don't have vision, you're blind. And that's really what went on. We, we didn't have no vision. We were blind. And the people that were teaching you, they didn't have no vision. They were blind. So that was the blind leading the blind. And uh, no bow shall fall in the ditch. That's the lake of fire. Uh, uh -oh. Oh, then, wow. answered, then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Yahshua said, are ye also yet without understanding? Do, do not ye yet understand that that whatsoever entereth the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out of the drop? Whatever you eat, you know, it's going to be processed and what the body don't want, it's got to go out. You understand? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and, and they defile the man. See? Uh, for out of the heart proceed uh, evil, evil thoughts, murders, <laughs> adulteries, fornication. Do you know that came out of the heart? That comes out of people's mouth? 
<laughs> murders, yeah. adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashing hands defiles not a man. Yeah. So you see how you can uh, you can do those things physically, and then you can also, by preaching, be doing those things spiritually. Mm -hmm. See, it's showing the, how the devil or demons operate in bodies. Okay, so uh, just, you know, that's where he was talking from there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, good. Wow, we. Okay, so now they say they put, they make, make the Messiah out a liar, make him out a liar by saying that he sent his disciples out to baptize in the Great Commission, baptize in water. He did not say that. That is not in the Bible. This is the wrong dispensation for that. This is the wrong dispensation for physical circumcision. This is the wrong dispensation for eating Passovers that way. Now, anytime anybody does anything like that, it's easier to be deceived by doing by those things. Why? Because they fit right with a carnal mind. Yep. And that's how Yahweh is succeeding and hiding the thing from 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 the devil and we never told nobody that they didn't need their supper and paul is saying that their people's god is their belly that's what everybody is doing out there trying to make a fast buck so we can feed his belly solomon said all the labor of a man under the sun is for his belly and yet his appetite is not satisfied now we in this country we have plenty Plenty of weeds and grain and produce and whatnot, overabundance. Over in Vietnam and all places over there, the rice patties, they don't have much to eat. Little small children with malnutrition, starvation, little bones sticking through their ribs. And here you are out here with an overabundance, belly full. <laughs> Some of us overweight. Now he's just gone from preaching to meddling and all of them different kind of things. We go home and lay down on a bed and sleep through the night. We don't have guns and then all those various different kind of bombs and shells dropping around. And still you are unthankful and you have an opportunity to come down, sit down here and learn and know something about Yahweh. And you don't even appreciate that. Now the wrath of Yahweh is against all of that. That's right. Uh, <laughs> So you see, you see the stuff we have to eat here, the things we're being taught. And, and see, that's one thing when people say, well, we use the Bible too. Yeah, but you think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the New Testament. You don't realize that's in a different age and a different dispensation when he was walking around on the earth. He was under the law. That is a great thing to learn, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it that, is. That when he gave the commission right before he ascended, that's still in the post Luvian age when he ascended and said, you know, telling them to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. And he never said water, but that's what everybody believes. Because uh, that's what they do when they baptize babies. Uh, I baptize this uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Will Holy never Spirit. tell you what the name is and use water, you understand? Uh, so uh, you see that he's talking about, and we have this overabundance of, why, why is it so fruitful over here? Because he's given a divine vision revelation and the fruit of the spirit's being poured out. And then he says, and, and we don't have no bombs flying like over there in Ukraine. Now you would have, you would have, a, you would have a, a excuse not to go to class. <laughs> <laughs> if you had bombs flying like that you understand uh, yeah, right. and people trying to kill you mm -hmm. you understand uh, and, and, but but we're still are unthankful you have an opportunity to come down sit down here and learn yep. and know something about Yahweh and you don't even appreciate that now the wrath of Yahweh is against all of that Wow. You understand? See, after you've been told, you don't want to be turned, you know, in other words, it's important. 
uh, and he gave you this to try to help somebody else too. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so uh, it's the uh, so uh, I think we're almost at the end, ain't we? Oh, uh, we still got a minute left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we can't even. Uh, yes. Yeah, so when are we? So tomorrow, um, Dr. Terry Welch is going to address this class. Okay. 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 Well, we we well, praise Yahshua Messiah. Praise Yahshua Messiah. We had up to uh, forty-seven attendees today, thank and we you. thank everyone that came out to study with us. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday from ten a.m. to twelve noon Eastern Standard Time, from seven a.m. to nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. in Malaysia, and from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in England. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Yahshua. We're here to hear. Yes, thank you, Yahshua. Hallelujah. We're here to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, Question. Alan. Good afternoon, Alan. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my sister. Whew. Which transcript Beautiful was class. 